Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on today's car. Listen man, in the world of, uh, of cars, 440, six barrel, Challenger RT, real deal Challenger RT, okay? With the 440 six pack in it, and this thing, I mean, rolls down the road. It is legendary, and quite honestly, these cars here, in stock fashion, were faster than the Hemi cars. If you've never driven a 440 car, it's probably one of the best sounding, best winding up uh, big block vehicles out there. You know, we sell 454 Chevelles and all kinds of big block vehicles, 455 Pontiac, stuff like that, but the 440 engine in the Chrysler is spectacular. They had some seriously good engineering back in the day. And you can be a Chevy fan or a Pontiac fan or whatever, but every car has its strength. The engines in these cars here, they're rated at 390 horsepower. This one's well into, we rated it 450 because that's what we were told it was built to, but we were told it was more like 500 horsepower. So we'll just say that it's somewhere around there and it feels every bit of it, all right? Let's take a peek at the paint. So Rally Red, I love Rally Red, man, a Rally Red muscle car. And what I love so much is about it, so we're looking under the fluorescent lights here. The fluorescent lights are really hard on a car. They look how hideous I look compared to how beautiful this car looks. The lights do that to you. So if you've ever been at a club late at night and the lights come on, you can imagine what everybody looks like, right? Am I, are you getting me here? That's why I want you to see the quality of the paint. So come on up, let's check that out right there. Read that, you can read the whole window sticker in the paint. You're looking at other cars on the internet. Make that guy show you this. Make him go through all this. Make sure you can see the time, okay, in the paint. Because pictures can make cars look great. I buy cars all the time from people and they send me pictures on it and the car arrives and it's nothing like the pictures. And you're like, oh, well, where are the pictures from? Oh, they're from uh, 10 years ago. Ugh. Right? So now I know better to ask. Anyway, great paint, love hood pins, fresh air hood, right? Great chrome. 71 grill is legendary. It's a really, really nice grill. This also has front and rear spoilers on it, which I really think looks great on a muscle car to begin with. So the Challengers have the split spoiler, where like a Camaro might have a whole front spoiler. You couldn't get a, a you know, a spoiler on a Chevelle. So that's why some of these muscle cars, uh, like the pony cars in this size range, look really cool and even more muscular with uh, those kinds of things. So as we walk around, let's look at some of the stuff that you are getting on the car that makes it a very different car. Rally wheels, BF Goodrich radial TAs, the white RT stripe that goes down here that matches this here. This is great looking. Look how fat those tires are and they're tucked up inside of there as well. The underneath of this car, we're gonna take a quick peek under here. I'd love to show you this real quick if I could because these are the things that nobody likes to show you. Look how beautiful these floor pans are. You can see every ribbon here. You can see every line. Everything is in really, really great shape because it's a really nice car. And I'm hanging upside down talking to you and I'm getting a little bit dizzy, but it feels good. So I'm really not gonna move yet. All right, I'll move now. Okay, I'm ready. Great, great feature. The cap here also has a cap inside so uh, nobody can get to it, but this is just a cool muscle car touch. This has got the rear wing. The reason I get a little excited about this is everybody has their first muscle car. This was my first muscle car, 71 Challenger RT. My first muscle car. Got the quad tips in the back coming out. They're nice polished chrome, all right? This is a, a wonderful car. All right, so let's do this. We've looked at the outside of the car. We already know the outside of the car is really great looking. Let's go look under the hood because you're gonna to wanna to take this car to a car show. When you go to the car show, they're gonna ask you to open the hood because the call outs on the hood all right, says it all. So let's go check that out now. All right, so we have hood pins, which check, check, muscle car. Spoilers, check, muscle car. Learn how to open the hood of your muscle car, check. All right, check this out. So the Mopars are a little different than say Ford and Chevrolet. So the Fords and the, and the GMs, I should say, don't have a painted um, engine compartment and don't have a painted trunk either. Chrysler went a little bit different. They painted those kinds of things in here. And that's the detail that you're talking about when you want to take a car to a show. So look at the size of this 440 V8. This is one big engine in here, right? And not only is it a big engine, it underneath here, it is three two barrel carburetors, all right? We're talking about from the factory, 390 horsepower again, this could be in between 450 and 500 horsepower. And when I say it, when you hit the gas, this thing is super fast and it sounds spectacular, all right? So the detail stuff, like battery topper, okay? Power steering, painted correctly, Hemi Orange, the engine, as well as the valve covers like they're supposed to be, aluminum intake like would have come 69 and a half and later on all six pack cars, okay? Call outs there, 
So uh, just, just a little stuff like that. This here has um, upgraded uh, electronic ignition as well. So it's, uh, it's a little easier to start and starts much better on colder or hotter days, okay? Great looking detail in here. Well, so part of the documentation uh, for a Mopar is the fender tag. So come on up here and check this out. And this is how you know for certain whether, because with a Chevelle, you don't know if it's a real SS396 or 454, and a lot of the other cars you don't know either, so unless you have a window sticker. But with Chrysler's, you get this tag here called a fender tag, right? And this is actually an incorrectly done fender tag. I'm going to show you why. First off, only this screw right here uh, should be painted. And the reason why is this screw right here wouldn't have been in. So it would have come down the assembly line and you can see the little corner crease there. They would have bent this tag up because this is a tag they used to build the car. So all the options and things like that that you would have installed in the car are on here. But what I wanted to show you was that this says JS23N1B in the VIN number. And that lets you know that this is an RT. And that's a big deal because you want to make sure you're getting an RT. But where I'm getting with the this is, this is how you know you're getting an RT, but the little documentation piece is still here as well as paint coats and things like that but so this screw right here should actually be unpainted and we could do that if you asked us to no big deal and the reason why it's unpainted is this tag would have been used to build the car they would have bent it back painted the whole car and then used a fresh screw to screw the tag down and that's why one screw is supposed to be painted and one is not okay there's your Chrysler history lesson for today thank you for seeing Jacques Cousteau All right, so come check this out. This is nice too here. This is the detail stuff I'm talking about. Painted trunk, where on a GM or uh, Ford, it would have been splatter painted or painted flat black, matte black, satin black, whatever it is you want to call it. It says new weather strippings all the way around. It's got the jacking instructions. These plates are important here because those are uh, the rear wing mounting plates. All right, some people do it incorrectly and just mount it right to the trunk lid and that would not be correct on this car, all right? And then, um, depending on the model that you would have gotten right here, you can see the fuel filler neck in here because this has the RT gas cap. And the regular cars would not have had uh, that option on it. All right, trunk mat, spare tire. You say, well, spare tire, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is nine out of 10 cars don't come with a spare tire. And if there's a spare tire in there, that means that somebody has done the detail work uh, to get you a, a much nicer car uh, than one without, okay? fresh gasket. All right, come on in and see where you're going to spend most of your time anyway, okay? This is nice. This has the original, has another set of keys as well, but this is the original set of keys to this car, which is really cool that it's still, 40 years later, works like a champ. And then including the key lockout, you can't take the key out unless you use that. All right, so uh, RT three-spoke wheel. This got the console with the slapstick shifter. If you've never used a slapstick shifter, this is one awesome piece of engineering, okay? It says the upgraded interior in it as well, all right? So check out how the shifter works, and I'll show you real quick. Come on up here a little bit. And the way it works is you're in first gear. You go ahead and step on the gas, and you go as fast as you want, and hit it as hard as you want. It will only go to second. Then you just let it lock back a second. There, it clicked in there. And you're ready for third, ready for shift. Boom, and you just push it forward can't miss a shift, it won't go to neutral. It's an awesome, awesome shifter, and more importantly, it's a factory shifter, which is really cool, all right? Okay, so uh, here we have a full rally dash, all right, with uh, 150 mile an hour speedometer, 8,000 RPM tack, full factory gauges, clock, original AM style radio. Cool, so if you wanted to, uh, what you could do is this has a little bit of an upgraded sound system in the sense that this has got upgraded speakers in it, all right? If you wanted to, we do this a lot, is we leave the stock radio here and we put a nice little digital sound system in the glove box there, and that way it leaves the dash looking stock, but you can still get some great tunes. You can have iPod, you can stream your music from your phone right here. You don't even have to open the glove box anymore. Uh, we install these for people all the time, just ask us about it, okay? Black bucket seat interior, plenty of room for people in back. All right, can reach. There we go. Look at all this room back here. Look how nicely detailed everything is. The package shelf, the side panels, seats, great carpet, new mats, all that good stuff. Okay, again, it's got a console here, which is nice. Just little stuff like that that makes for driving these cars really nice. Just a great cockpit inside. And you can take another couple out, take the kids out, and kids love the feel of the power. I mean, you don't have to drive 100 miles an hour. 
you can go to 60 miles an hour, but go to 60 miles an hour with a little bit of power and the pushing you back in the seat like that, kids go crazy. I, was, I know my kids loved it, all right? One thing I wanted to show you too is this Challenger here is certified. It's a certified classic car and you say, well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is it's a 120 point inspection, two hours to check the car over by uh, an ASC certified mechanic or a mechanic that has way more experience than ASC certification. Um, on top of it, we've uh, changed the oil on the car. Uh, we average spend thousands of dollars getting these cars ready for sale. Okay, and then we don't just, they don't just show up and we put wax on them. We do a lot more to them. We check the tire pressures, the brakes, are the seat belts bolted down? Uh, is the front end right? Is the ball joints good? Any of that stuff bad, we replace it because uh, the safety part is important to us. And that gives us, once, that's, uh, once the service manager drives this car, he decides whether it's certified or not. The sales department can't decide that for him. So no matter how hard your salesman wants to sell you a certified car, if it's not on there, he's not getting it unless the service manager does what it needs to take to get it to that level. All right, so we're gonna close up the video now. We're talking about a 71, kind of the last run for the big, big block motors, multi-carbureted cars. They're the most desirable right now. Anything with big cubic inches and multi-carburation have become investment grade cars. So 446 barrel, originally rated at 390 horsepower. Now we're talking about 450, maybe even 500, don't know. But I can tell you this, it's plenty. Great rally red paint. The underneath of the car is really very nice as well. And that's important. You're not gonna spend any time on there, but that determines how well this car drives. It's got the rally wheels with the BF Goodrich radial TAs. Great sounding dual exhaust. And then once you get inside, it's got the great bucket seats and the console, the full rally dash with the tack, gauges, clock, all that stuff is already in there. Original AM radio. So you say, well, the AM radio, yuck. You're right, yuck, but we could always put a nice digital sound system in the glove box and hide it for you. And that way you got all your tunes. And then you can either listen to the tunes of what's under the hood or tunes what's coming out of the radio. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this bad A 446 barrel challenger. All right, how about I start it for you so you can hear what that, uh, that big 446 barrel sounds like.